I'm back again with Gary Sikich, and we're continuing our series discussing cyber global insecurity as it relates to the energy sector. And in this segment, we're going to talk more about things that can be done to help protect against these cyber threats. So Lee, when we look at protection, I think there's, there's a three level process. And I think you can, you can describe some of the things that have to go on in, in these three levels. Strategically, I put together a business plan for an organization. And that organization sets goals and objectives. One would be to have cybersecurity. Now, how do I execute that? What are the things that at the operational and tactical level, the things that really are going to prevent? What are those things? What are, what are those things well, that are going to help me? Well, much like we were talking before about detecting compromises, having a, a solid inventory on what your digital assets are, what computer devices, what cell phones. If you know what your devices are, and you have that information available, you'll be able to spot when something goes wrong. So part of protecting is doing the, the bean counting work of inventorying your, your digital assets. So it's not just an audit process. It's much more of a detailed look at what those assets consist yeah. of. And once you know what your assets are, you can figure out who are they assigned to. If someone leaves your organization, you should have accountability steps in place to retrieve those assets. Um, you should also be inventorying the state of those assets. Are they fully patched and up to date? Mm -hmm. If you're not patching your devices, you're at great risk of cyber compromise. So as an entity, not only do I have to worry about being compromised from an external source, but I also have the, the internal threat of a disgruntled employee, of someone leaving the company, not with any mel, you know, uh, intent, no, malicious intent, if you will, but just not following up on what I should have done as they out -process. Exactly, password rotations. People have weak passwords. People become compromised. People reuse their passwords. If someone reused their password for one of your important infrastructure systems on a popular social media site, and that site becomes compromised, guess what? Those passwords get loaded up into software for hacking and they do what's known as credential stuffing attack. They, they loop through and they fire at every device they can using the username and password, the known username and password. And that's how a lot of people fall, for, fall prey to attacks. So in that context, should you store passwords uh, via one of the, the, like Google Chrome or some of the other uh, Internet Explorer, those type of things. Uh, Should I, you store passwords I, that way? I recommend against storing in your browser. If you're going to store them somewhere, I think a, a password uh, management tool like LastPass uh, that has two-factor capabilities. Uh, two-factor authentication essentially means that you have to know your, it's something you know plus something you have or something you are. In, in the case of LastPass, you're typically using either your cell phone with an app that has Authenticator, that's something you have, plus your, your master password. And that helps protect against someone intercepting your password and being able to log on. So in, that, in essence, protection is not a simplified process. Protection is something that we have to sort of dedicate ourselves to conscientiously and make sure that we continue to maintain and up-to-date awareness exactly. in order to be able to fully protect ourselves. Exactly, and that brings in your staff. You need to know that your staff are being educated about uh, popular ways that companies become compromised. Like if a bunch of USB devices are dropped in the parking lot, they might say things like payroll or something on it. Would your employees plug that into your computer? You know, are you testing for that? Mm -hmm. you know, there are things you can do. There are, um, there are services out there where you can have your own organization spearfished by a white hat hacker that's going to tell you who clicked. And then you know who you need to educate. Mm -hmm. So we've made two points thus far on protection. One is that it needs to be part of the business plan. It has to be audited in terms of auditing, knowing what you have devices wise. Second is that you have to have educated employees. Now, both of those aspects present some sort, somewhat of a business conundrum, if you will. 
education doesn't necessarily equate to dollars yeah. coming in. But from a protection standpoint, I think the sales point would be that it prevents dollars going out. And the better educated, the more aware, so that we can look at the other aspects that we discussed, detecting and protecting yeah. being two. Unfortunately, if you run an organization today, you have a new job, which is to make sure that you're cyber secure. And it's a serious threat that uh, corporate boards are making their CEOs accountable for. So, you know, it, and it's multifaceted. You gotta train your employees, you gotta know what you have, you gotta make sure what you have is up to date and patched. Mm -hmm. And then you also need to make sure that you have some mechanism uh, to, to monitor and record events so that um, you can tell if you become compromised. So the, the protection really requires much more today than it used to. It, it's uh, the number of ways that an organization can become compromised can be via an employee's cell phone that becomes compromised and then launches an attack on your internal systems. So in the, it's kind of like the mindset, if you will, has to be changed in terms of looking at management and their commitment to cybersecurity protection. In the days past, we looked at protection. What can I do? Put up a wall. What can I do? I can, I can physically protect my, my facilities and my operation. Now today, that becomes more of a challenge because we're dependent more on things that are not necessarily um, in the realm of physical protection per se. So we really have to be, begin to rethink how we look at protection yeah. and in, ensure that the process is continuous, not a one-time situation. Exactly, and, and certainly, you know, a DR, known as disaster recovery planning and contingency planning, can go a long way. You know, a simple act of making an offline backup on a periodic basis, and you know, maybe that's only once a month for some organizations, but at least if you have something offline, if you get hit by a crypto locker attack, the, the risk comes down to, well, what does it cost for us to rebuild the last month, mm -hmm. or maybe it's the last week, or maybe it's last night. So thinking through, uh, I, I think going through the disaster recovery planning exercise is a really good way to help protect your organization. Okay, I'd agree with you on the planning aspect. The, the caution I would say with that is that all too often organizations develop disaster recovery, business continuity, other types of plans to deal with the consequence, to deal with emergencies, the response. The, the challenge is that those plans need to be kept, as you did say with yeah. the cyber, up to date and consistently reviewed. Um, yeah. and that, that's where you know, having, someone, mental work. having someone like you and myself come in yeah. to audit the business risk and actually inspect to see, is the plan being followed? Is the C-suite having a false sense of security because there's this plan that was produced years ago that no one's really looked into. You know, it doesn't take but, you know, I, I think you and I on site for one day, we, we could we could help poke holes and give a report of, is an organization following their plan or does it look like everything's far off? But you're not gonna get that reporting from your own people internally. Yeah, I think it's a challenge for yeah. people internally because they, there's a vested interest, number one. Number two, they think that, that in a lot of respects they've done what needs to get done. Uh, and the other aspect, and I think this is important from what you point out, is that when you begin to look at the, today's plans, you have to realize they're kind of reactive in many respects. They're not very proactive. So they react to an event happening. You know, that's good because that helps companies become more resilient, but it doesn't keep them from protecting themselves yeah. but there's as they all, need to. Exactly, but there's also a financial component to these plans. Exactly. You know, it's not uncommon that IT, they'll go through this exercise, and then afterwards they'll say, well, I need this subscription, this software, I need this vendor, and none of that funding comes through. Yeah. But it's much better, and that sometimes gets lost in the minutia from planning to execution. And if that, in fact, is happening, you wanna know about it before you need the DR, and it's not there. So I, I think that wraps up our section on protection. Yeah. In our next segment, we'll be talking a little bit more about responding to the crisis of a cyber breach as it relates to the energy sector.